Hello everyone. People, especially the youngsters, often like to look at themselves in the mirror. But have you ever seen an animal getting attracted by its own reflection? In this story, a snake gets attracted by its reflection in the mirror, hereby sparing the life of a young doctor. How? Let's read in the story The Snake and the Mirror, Chapter 5 of Class 9 by Waikum Muhammad Bashir. Do you like to look at yourself in the mirror? What do you think about at such times? Have you ever seen a dog, a cat or a bird look into a mirror? What do you think it sees? Now read this humorous story about a doctor, a snake and a mirror. This is a humorous story where a doctor has narrated how he encountered a snake and escaped a narrow death because the snake was mesmerized by its reflection in the mirror. Now let's read this interesting story. Has a snake ever coiled itself around any part of your body? A full-blooded cobra. All of us fell silent. The question came from the homeopath. The topic came up when we were discussing snakes. We listened attentively as the doctor continued with his tale. A group of doctors were discussing about snakes when a homeopath, homeopathy is a branch of medicine, came up with a question, has a snake ever coiled itself around any part of your body, a full-blooded cobra? And all other doctors listened to him silently. And the doctor continued with his story. It was a hot summer night about 10 o'clock. I had my meal at the restaurant and returned to my room. I heard a noise from above as I opened the door. The sound was familiar one. One could say that rats and I shared the room. I took out my box of matches and lighted the kerosene lamp on the table. So the doctor continued that it was a hot summer night and it was about 10 o'clock. He had his food at a restaurant and returned to his room. He heard some noise as he opened the door and that was a familiar noise. It was nothing new. He was used to that noise. And by hearing the noise, one could say that there are rats in his room. That means rat and the doctor shared the room. The doctor took out a matchbox and lighted the kerosene lamp on the table as his house was not electrified. There was no electricity in his house. It was a small rented room and the doctor had just set up a medical practice. His earning was meager. Meager means very small. Since he was a new doctor, he had just started his medical practice. His earning was very small. He had about six rupees in his suitcase along with some shirts and dhotis. And he also possessed a solitary black coat. That means solitary means the only black coat which he was wearing at that time. He took off his black coat, white shirt and not so white waist which he, he was wearing from inside and hung them up in the room. And then he opened the two windows in his room. It was an outer room with one wall facing the open yard. So it was on the outside of the outer side of the house with the one of the wall facing the open yard. And it was a small room which was not electrified, which shows that the doctor was poor. It had a tilted roof with long supporting gables that rested on the beam of the wall. As you can see in the picture, a gable is upper part of a wall uh, below a sloping roof. So it was a tilted, that means slanting roof, which was on the supported, uh, supporting gables. There was no ceiling. There was a regular traffic of rat to and fro uh, from the beam. So there was no ceiling. There was no flat surface on the top of the wall. And there was a regular flow of rats. Rats used to come down and up from the beam. I made my bed and pull it close to the wall. So the doctor prepared his bed for sleeping and dragged it close to the wall and lay down. But he could not sleep. So he got up and went out to the veranda for a little air. But the wind God seemed to have taken time off. That means there was no wind. It was hot summer and it seemed the wind God has taken off. That means no wind was blowing. I went back into the room and sat down on the chair. The doctor went inside, sat on the chair and he opened the box which was below his table and he took out his medical practicing book, Materia Medica. I opened it at the table on which stood up the lamp and a large mirror, a small comb lay beside the mirror. So it, he opened it on the table. He sat on the chair and he opened the book on the table next to which there was a lamp and a large mirror and a comb was next to the mirror. So when you see the mirror, you feel tempted 
uh, in looking at the mirror so the doctors did the same one feels tempted to look into the into a mirror when it is near near one so when a mirror is near one a person feels tempted to look into the mirror i took a look so the doctor also looked at the mirror and in those days i was a great admirer of beauty and i believed in making myself look handsome so the doctor was young so he said that in those days he was a great admirer he loved beauty he appreciated beauty and he believed in making himself look handsome he was unmarried he was a doctor i felt i had to make my presence felt so the doctor thought that he should make his presence felt by making himself handsome so he picked up the comb and he ran it through his hair and adjusted the parting of his hair so that it looked straight and neat so he made his hair so that he looked more handsome his hair looked straight and neat again i heard that sound from above so he heard some sound which was coming from above which he thought was made by rats i took a close look at my face in the mirror i made an important decision so the doctor looked at the mirror and he made his first important decision and what was it i would shave daily and grow a thin mustache to look more handsome i was after all a bachelor and a doctor so this was the doctor's first important decision that he would shave daily he would grow a thin mustache to look more handsome then he looked into the mirror and smiled and it was an attractive smile the doctor felt that his smile was attractive and then he made another earth shaking decision and what was it that i would always keep that attractive smile on my face to look more handsome i was after all a bachelor and a doctor too on top of it so another earth shaking decision was that he will always keep that attractive smile on his face to look more handsome so first important decision was that he would shave daily and keep a thin mustache to look more handsome and second earth shaking decision was that he would keep that attractive smile on his face always to look more handsome he was after all a bachelor and on top of it a doctor this was the thought of the young doctor and then he again heard the noise from above i got up paced up and down the room then another lovely thought struck me so he got up from his place he walked up and down the room and then another lovely thought came in his mind that i would marry i would get married to a woman doctor who had plenty of money and a good medical practice so this was the third thought which came in his mind that he would marry a woman who was a doctor and who had good money she had to be fat for a valid reason if i made some silly mistake and needed to run away she should not be able to run after me and catch me so this was his thought that he would marry a doctor who had plenty of money but she should be fat for the reason that if he made any silly mistake and needed to run away his wife would not be able to catch him with such thoughts in my mind i resumed my seat in the chair in front of the table so which these thoughts were going on in his mind he came back on the chair where his table in front of his table and there were no more sound coming and suddenly there came a dull thud a very dull sound as if a rubber tube had fallen from the roof on the ground and the doctor thought that there was nothing to worry about even so he was thinking so he felt like turning around and taking a look what has happened and as soon as he turned around as he has said no sooner had i turned than a fat snake wriggled over the back of my chair and landed on my shoulder so as soon as he turned around there was a fat snake which wriggled that means crawled over the back of his chair and landed on his shoulder the his turning and the snake's landing on his shoulder they happened simultaneously both of them happened together now what was doctor's reaction i didn't jump i didn't tremble i didn't cry he did not do there was no reaction he was just so shocked that he didn't jump he didn't tremble he didn't cry there was no time to do any such thing the snake slithered along my shoulder that means moved swiftly over his shoulder and came up to his left arm and coiled coiled around that means rolled him around his arm the do- the snake rolled around doctor's left arm above his elbow and the hood the head of the snake was spread out 
its head was hardly three or four inches from his face it was so near to the doctor's face his head was spread and he was hardly it was hardly three or four inches from the face of the doctor it would not be correct to say merely that i sat there holding my breath the doctor was sitting there holding his breath as if he had turned into stone he couldn't do anything his body was completely stopped his body has stopped reacting but his mind was active the doctor's mind was active the door opened into darkness the room was surrounded by darkness there was complete darkness in the room and in that darkness the doctor sat in the light of a lamp like a stone image of flesh he couldn't move he was like a stone image of flesh then at that moment the doctor felt the presence of the creator of this world god so when we are in trouble we often remember we often often think about either the person whom we love a lot uh, like our mother and father and god so he felt the presence was of god god was there he thought that god was there and suppose i had something and he did not like it he thought that i had done something which god god did not like and that is why he was god was punishing him so he tried in his imagination writing in bright letters outside his heart oh god so he was trying to talk to god he was trying to apologize to god then he felt a pain in his left arm and it was as if thick leaden rod no not leaden rod but a molten fire as if something very hot and very strong is piercing into his arm it was very powerful and crushing his arm because the snake was coiling around his arm the snake has coiled the arm was beginning to drain of all strength what could i do so all the strength was draining out of his arm the doctor could not do anything at my slightest movement the snake would strike me so he thought if he moved a little the snake would strike him death lurked four inches away lurked means to stay hidden and attack on opportunity so death was hidden it was just four inches away in the form of the snake suppose it stuck there was what was the medicine i had to take so the doctor thought that suppose the snake stuck him which medicine was he supposed to take there was no medicine in his room he was but a poor doctor and he also felt that he was foolish and stupid doctor and in his danger he forgot everything and he smiled feebly he gave a very slight smile like a foolish he smiled at itself it seemed as if god appreciated that so he felt that god has appreciated his presence of mind at that moment the snake turned its head from the face of the doctor and as the snake turned his head we know that uh, that there was a table in front uh, there was a mirror in front of the doctor the snake looked into the mirror and saw its reflection i do not claim that it was the first snake that had ever looked into the mirror the doctor says that i don't claim that it was the one and only snake or the first snake who had ever looked into the mirror but it was certain that the snake looked into the mirror was it admiring its own beauty so he say, said that it was certain i confirm that the snake did look itself into the mirror and got attracted was it admiring its own beauty was it trying to make an important decision about growing a mustache or, or using eye shadow and mascara or wearing a vermilion on its forehead so the doctor just thought that the snake got attracted by its own beauty and what was it doing by looking itself into the mirror was it making an important decision was it making a decision of making itself more beautiful by putting eye shadow mascara or vermilion because the doctor did not know what sex uh, did the snake belong to was it a male or female and the doctor said that he will never know that for the snake unwounded the snake left the arm of the doctor and slowly slithered into my lap Slow, slowly it came into the doctor's lap and from there it went on the table and moved towards the mirror the snake was so attracted by its reflection that it left the arm of the doctor slithered into its uh, his lap and then moved towards the mirror leaving the doctor perhaps it wanted to enjoy its reflection at close quarter but maybe the snake wanted to enjoy its reflection from a close distance now i was no more mere image cut in granite so now the doctor was no more a stone image it was relieved i suddenly 
I was suddenly a man of flesh and blood. Suddenly he felt that he has come alive. He was a man of flesh and blood. Still holding my breath, I got up from the chair. The doctor got up from uh, his chair and quietly went out through the door into the veranda. And from there, he jumped into the yard and ran, ran for all I was worth. Uh, he gathered all the strength in his body and he ran. Phew, each of us heaved a sigh of relief. So the doc group of doctors, which was listening to this person, they gave a sigh of relief. Phew, somebody asked, doctor, is your wife very fat? So somebody from the group asked, doctor, as you were thinking of marrying a fat woman, is your wife very fat? No, the doctor said, no, my wife is not fat. God willed otherwise. God had some other thoughts for him. As my life companion is thin, reedy person with the gift of a sprinter. Sprinter is a person who can run very fast. The runners in the, uh, the athletes are also called sprinters. So my wife is very thin and she has a gift of sprinter. She can run very fast. Then someone else asked, doctor, when you ran, did the snake follow? Did the snake follow you when you ran? And the doctor replied, I ran and ran till I reached a friend's house. Immediately, I smeared oil all over myself and took a bath. So doctor said that I'd never look back. I just ran and ran till I re reached a friend's house and I applied oil all over my body and took a bath and then changed into fresh clothes. And then next morning at about 8.30, I took my friend and went into one or two other friends and went into the room to move my things from there, to take my things and move them away from there, move to some other location. But as they went into the room, they found that they had little to carry because some thief had already removed all of his things. The room had, had been cleaned, but not really. The thief left behind one thing as a final insult. So the doctor says that he was completely robbed as some thief had come, come into the room at night and taken everything except one thing as an insult, as a final insult. And what was that? I asked. So the narrator, the narrator of the story asked, what was that? And the doctor said, my vest, the dirty one, the inner vest that the doctor wearing, was wearing, that was left there. The thief did not take it. The fellow had such a sense of cleanliness. The rascal could have taken it and used it after washing it with soap and water. So the doctor said in a frustrated tone that if he had such a set of uh, set, such a sense of cleanliness, he would have taken it, washed it and worn it after that. Did you see the snake the next day, doctor? Somebody asked, did you see the snake? Was it in the room? And the doctor laughed. He said, I ne have never seen it since. It was a snake which was taken with its own beauty. So the doctor said that, no, I never saw the snake. It was a snake which was taken. That means attracted by its own beauty. The story is by Vaiko Muhammad Bashir. It was translated from Malayalam to English by V. Abdullah. So wasn't this story interesting? So have you ever seen an animal getting attracted by its own reflection? Do write in the comment section. This is all for now. I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye. Take care.